Get it. All right. Welcome back from Desk of Low. I have with me, um, he gave me a very inspirational message very early on. And um, it's crazy how it didn't come for a circle. He just released one of the Lost G mixes. And let me tell you, I've been bumping that for the last couple days. Fire. He's one half of the legendary group Smith & Wesson. Without further introductions, I have with me, Tech. Well, how are you doing on this fine October Monday, Tech? Oh, man. Any day above ground is beautiful and blessed to be. Right. Um, we just can't hear you that good, Tech. I said any day above ground is a blessed one. I feel beautiful. No complaints. Got my health, my son and family. is good, so it's beautiful. All right. Uh, um, I also understand that you come from a family of... Uh, 15 or 16 siblings? Yeah, 16. Oh, wow. So, um, I can only imagine, too, that coming from a very big family, too, that you always inspired to have a family of your own one day. Yeah, I did, but, I mean, not being a fact that I come from such a huge family made me want to have a big family. It just wanted me, it just gave me a lot of principle and morals about what family is and to be family orientated so yeah I did want to have a family but you know as a as a young man growing up all you really want for is a healthy boy or girl and a child anyway and you know once you bless with that everything else is a progression you take steps with it that's a fact right there too um so I understand when you were coming up in the late, uh, sorry, in the early 90s, too, you didn't talk much. Nah, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of shy, I'm shy Gemini, you know, it just, I'd rather listen and learn than speak and be, you know, seen most of the time, so for me, it, it was it was easy just to grow up under the old OGs, my older brothers, people that I was running in the street with, my uh mentors or, or, you know, just figures that I looked up to that looked like me in the hood. It was it was easy to listen and learn the ends and outs of the game and the hood life and street life and then apply it to my own, you know, take what I learned from, of just like a boxer, you watch tapes of the greats, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and you add them to your own style. So being able to listen and learn and add to my own, it was fairly easy until, I guess you could say, the shining when I started really opening up more and letting my voice be heard. Because, you know, it was more than just being quiet. If I had a, a high-pitched voice, you know, I was always teased to look like a monkey or or you was just too violent. You don't talk, you just hitting. So it, it was all types of reasons, but that was one of the main ones. Right? So, you know, it's all good. I was going to say, too, coming from somebody who never talked much, too, but you were just soaking everything in, you did one hell of a debut opening up on The Shine, and I just got to give you that. can like, wow, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, man. You know, God, one of the, the most beautiful gifts that God has given us as human to raise up and lift up, to praise to him, to give thanks to him for his many blessings is the voice. And once you learn your voice, don't be afraid to use it, you know, because... It's only one you, so just be the best you you can be. Wow. You know, somebody told me that very early on because um, I didn't like my voice either, but they said that's what that's what's the beauty about hip hop. It's unique. Use it to your advantage. Yeah, you 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 make distinctions of your voice. Like just recently, not too long ago, in a session with uh, Bernard that Price, you know our late brother Sean Price, wife a little fame. Yes. It's like your tech, your voice is unique, man, and don't ever switch it to try to change it because that's what makes you stand out as an MC, as a person, as an individual from everything else that's in the game in the world, period. And to take that coming from another MC that's been in the game as far as long as we have with each other, it's like I tell her the same thing, yo, I, I cannot do what Little Fade or Billy Dead MOP do. Smith and West can't do that, and they can't do what we do. But it's the voices and the way we interact that make us all so unique and special to one another. 
Yeah, because you can tell when tech's on a record, too, because, like, you don't just be like, oh, it's kind of hard to tell them apart. It's like, even besides between you and Steel, they're very distinctive voices, so you can tell which one member it is, too. I notice that for a lot of people. They're like, well, which one is who? I'm like, you just got to listen to the music, young blood. That's, <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Yeah. Nowadays, most people would only want to see themselves when they rarely want to see other people win too. And that's very rare coming from somebody like you too because you have albums with people, they can only wish they had albums with like Pete Rock and Nine for Wonder and you're still humble to this day about it. You're like, man, I ain't doing that. I got these guys. But like, it just shows like your character and integrity and I believe that it's one of a kind. Like... I would be cocky. I, I won't front. I'll be cocky as hell if I had those albums underneath my belt. <laughs> All right, thank you. I'm just, I'm just a humble servant from the Most High, man. A vessel that he <laughs> allows, he allows me to use my gift that he gave me, and my way of giving back is to, to give back to the people that's rocking with Smith and Wesson, that's rocking with Tech and Steel, Boot Camp, or whoever. Your choice of music may be. It's just it's all about each one teach one, man, and getting forward. Because we all trying to get to that next level. Yes. To be successful. So we got to get there together. Though. Once we get there, nobody there to share it with. Or you can't, you, you always the smartest person in the room. You're going to be fucked up. Yeah. You can't take nobody criticism. You can't ask nobody for advice. Nah, life don't work like that. It might for a little while, but after that, it's a wrap. I always tell people there's always room for criticism, too. Like, it's not like tearing a person down and just saying what they can do to improve and improve their craft. Right. But the thing is, if you're going to criticize, make it constructive. Yeah. You don't have to come from a place of malice or hate, and all you do is criticize. You don't give... Uh, a constructive outlook on after you criticize. You don't get, well, if you're doing this, then you can try this or make it this way to try to make it better. All you're doing is destroy it. Yeah. Where's the build that? In the God's lesson, it's called build and destroy. Once you tear down, you rebuild with a stronger foundation. And you let, if you're going to let the person know what's going on, you have to have some type of experience in it or what you was doing somewhere to be able to build and help that person. Other than that, keep your fucking opinion to yourself and your negative and bad energy away. Exactly. We only want positive vibes around us. That's right. No bad energy like the God nonsense. I was going to say that, too. Uh, <laughs> I was just uh, Lost Tapes Volume 2. Uh, speaking of uh, Lost Tapes, too, uh, I actually wanted to talk to you about the Lost GMXs, too. Um, this is uh, in promotion for your upcoming solo album titled Priceless, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, what made you want to, like, do a mixtape and release all, some of the most unreleased music from The Vault as, as a promotional project? Like, I was just curious behind your intentions with that, Ken. Because it's, who does that? You don't see that in music too much no more. Everybody <laughs> trying to monetize something, make a buck. That's saying anything wrong with that. 
But when you're looking at the bigger picture, you're thinking of short-term goals, you're thinking of long-term man-time relationships that you try to do and build other opportunities. Each time you move, it's supposed to be so thought out and so manipulated, so not manipulated, but so militant that you're thinking three steps ahead, like the chess teachers always say, or the, the kung fu, the defensive boxing teachers tell you, you have to move and think three steps ahead. So if you, when I was thinking about doing priceless, I was like, that's going to be, you can't just drop something on people out of unexpectedness and they think they're going to catch on right there because the intention span today it's real shitty and short, yo. That's a fact. <laughs> I dealt with that many of times. a fact. You know what I mean? You come with a five-course meal, a three-course meal, it'll be like, yo, this is, this is your appetizer. This is the entree, and now we got the dessert for you. So now you're taking them through progressions and steps. Be like, oh, okay. I get where he was coming from with this. He's setting me up to let me know to prepare for. It's going to be different from Smith & Wesson, but I am tech of Smith & Wesson, so it's still going to be my flavor. Yeah, I, I'm just wanting people to know. Not on every song you're gonna hear still voice coming behind mine, or you're gonna hear what's going back and forth like you you probably used to. It's gonna be something different, and definitely gonna be something beneficial to each and every one that listens to it. That hears, I hope everybody can get a jewel or something from it. And um, of course, I'm gonna have my PNC up there. It, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be nothing on here without him. So. Well, definitely gonna have PNC for life. Well, and it also shows too, like the growth as an artist and an individual too, because like most people, like, oh, he's from Smith and Wesson, but there's also standout tracks like "Let Him Lay" or "Devil in a Boot Dress." I'm like, damn, yo. I'm like, I, I, where's that priceless album? Come, we need to hear more of this. But it's like what you said. It's like it's like it's like the it's like the appetizer before the main course, though. Yeah, yeah, and it's been received. You know, even the fact that we give it that we giving it away free with the sound professional, it's something, it's, it's something different, and it's letting me know that the people are accepting it well because I can see it, you know, and it's telling me that they're looking forward to hearing Chrysler. So, that my job is halfway done, but the grind don't stop, you know. So that just lets me know, get your ass in the lab, push that pin on that pad, and give people what they want. Um, how long were you sitting on these songs too? Because I understand like they were in the vault for I don't know how long. Say it again. I was I understand like some of these songs were in the vault too. So I was curious on like um, the longest songs you ever had in these vaults, like what, like and how did you piece this together too? Because like you must have a lot of music in the vault. I mean to tell you the truth, I I pride myself on having a lot of music of working on music from the late great Tupac. Because even when we was working with him with Black Moon, Greg Nice on the One Nation project, that man has so much work. He will he was a workaholic. He would work nonstop. Like he would go from the movie set to another studio session, from a new studio session to a whole nother movie and then back to the studio that and we was still weird. we was rocking with him for the whole time so seeing this for the whole time being there with him you had to pick up something and I think I was blessed to pick up his work technique like that and um I think the longest joint on Craigslist that I had I mean well on the Lord's G mixes it may be uh, I don't know. I think Let Him Lay might be about four years old and joined with Black Rob. Wow. That might be about four or five years old. But, you know, recording it and trying to get it right and getting up with BR to do things right, you know, time waits for no man and it passes on. And then as you get older and wiser or more mature, you don't even have to get older. You just mature in your thoughts and in your moves. Things come back, like you said, full circle. Like, we've been kicking it over a while now. Now this interview is at full tuition. Yeah. So, things come back to you and come back up to you, and now you're in a better position to make something happen. You're like, all right, now it's time for that. Then wasn't the time. Most high don't make no mistakes. That wasn't the time. Now is the time for it, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. They say everything happens for a reason as well, too. Yeah, right. 
Um, this is a question that I've always heard rumor, <clears throat> rumors about, but I wanted to wait till I actually had interactions with you to ask you this. Is it really true you got Tupac to stop smoking cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I gotta know. <laughs> That's what you heard? Yes, sir. I mean, that's that's what I heard too. So, <laughs> well, we both into the same thing. Something gotta be true about it, right? Yeah, that's a fact. Um, so the beautiful thing, like Pac was my brother, and a Gemini the same way. Big was my brother and a Gemini, man. Like these was my my good friends, my brothers. And to this day, I miss both of them like the same way I miss my other brother Sean Price, man. You, that's. Uh, one of the reasons the album is called Priceless. Indeed. Because we're living in a world without Sean Price. Uh, our keys and principles are different. And just life itself is priceless, man. These beautiful children that these monsters, that some monsters are devouring out here. Someone, you know, has to, we love the babies like Wu-Tang say, man. Like, without the babies and a beautiful black woman, there is no us. And once... We're taken out of the home. There is nobody to show these babies guidance or to, to help raise young boys into men to learn how to be men and love black women and love just each other as brothers. You know what I mean? It's, it's so much that priceless cover that I want to try to get it to cover and people to understand that it may go over some people's head for the first moment or two. But I think, I think that, you know, we have very intelligent millennials and people of of more maturity and up in the age that knows what time it is. We have more people that's awoke in these days than ever before. Mm-hmm. And um, I think they're going to get it, man, and, and appreciate it. That's very true. Like, in this day and age, a lot of people are, like, awoken, too, because, like, back then, the information wasn't as easy as to get. Now, you can just get information right in the palm of your hand. Technology is a double-edged sword, man. You can, it's all how you want to open your antennas up and receive it. That's all. That's it's true. It's right there to get. And all you got to do is keep your head to the street and get it. Like they say, yo, ain't no new music, ain't no hip-hop out. Brother, we have satellite radio, we have pirate radio. There's so many ways to get your favorite artist music. All you got to do is put a little work and effort into it. And go get it. Stop waiting for every blessing that's going to come your way to fall out of the sky or fall into your lap. Because it don't work like that. No. You might get lucky and find a bag of money or a steak or a gold chain every now and then in the garbage. Even a broke clock is right one, two times a day. But, nah, you got to work and hustle and grind. That's a fact. Because nothing comes easy in this world. Um... So, with <clears throat> the upcoming release of Priceless 2, would you consider this um, your most personal album to date? Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, I did a couple of solo mixtapes before It Is What It Is. Uh, Tech, Elamina, Dawn, 24 Carat Smoke. Um, but yeah, but I, I wasn't moving. My life was different. I was in a whole different monster. I was in a different zone. I, I was... I was totally different, and I think Priceless is going to showcase that too. Because now I'm more, I'm I'm even steps ahead of from where I was back then. Well, you also got to experience a lot more life too. Like, like you even got to travel to Prague. Like, that's across the that's across the pond just for your music, exactly. and that's a blessing. We did, Smith & Wesson alone just did half of this summer on a European tour, so, you know, it's, it's it's a blessing to be able to travel the world one time, but to do it and come back and do it again two, three, four times, now you get a chance to slow down and see what you've been missing, when you was just ripping and running thinking you was going to miss something. Yeah. I actually wasn't missing nothing, now you get to see that, and it's beautiful because you remember those memories and those experiences and those moments. And you get you can write about it and talk about it and share. Do you uh sometimes when you're on tour, do you sometimes just throw on the headphones and go exploring? Say it again. 
sometimes when you're on tour, like when you guys like like before the show or after the show, do you like kind of just like throw on the headphones and go go exploring like on your days off on tour? Sometimes, so I mean, my partner still he does that shit a lot. He don't even need no headphones. He just wants <laughs> to find shit and do with it. Me, I'm more, as I said, I'm more uh, an introvert to myself type of person, more quiet. And I might just chill in my room because I got my portable speaker and my rhyme book and start writing down my ideas. Okay. Walk around for a little bit, nothing too crazy, and come back and finish writing. Hit the gym in the hotel. Okay. And also too, like I love when you post on your Instagram like the different foods you get to try overseas too. Like I believe you posted a, a, a octopus cocktail. I was like, damn, yo, I would try that. <laughs> yeah, popo. So delicious, man. And I've I've been blessed to have it tasted, prepared three different ways: grilled, broiled, and uh, you know, a little shimmered over some good white wine sauce, over spaghetti, and yeah. some good cooking. And it, it's it tastes beautiful. You know, a lot of people get turned off just by seeing the tentacles. And yeah. You know, and they be like, oh, gosh, these little sticky things. You got to swallow that. <laughs> like, come on, man. Open up your mind, man. Let your taste buds get experience of something different. You can't just eat bags of potato chips and heroes from the corner store all your life, B. Yeah. Because you never know what you may like. if you Because you can't, you can't knock it to your child, always tell people. There you go. Exactly. Um, <laughs> what's the craziest thing you ever had overseas, like, eaten? Like, like was it alligator or... Um, Alligator is actually delicious also. Okay. I see. I, I always imagine uh, it tasted like chicken for I some reason. The monkey brains before, that was probably the weirdest thing. Oh, wow. Jeez. That was the craziest thing. Like, uh, I ate horse before. Okay. Um, shark, of course. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I think... I think the most weirdest thing had to be monkey brains. And we, we ate that over in Japan. Yeah! Wow! Jeez! It was in the early, er, in the earlier years. I, I I hope they fried it. I really hope they fried it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just thinking about that Hannibal movie when he's feeding the guy his own brain. I'm like, yeah, I hope he fried it. Uh, that was a delicacy right there, bro. <laughs> I never tasted human brain. There's some sick motherfuckers out here mentally. I, I yeah. don't want to get none of that in my system. So yeah, yeah. I stay away from human brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fact. It's also a crime, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a crime if you get caught. Yeah, that's true. That's a fact. Um, so, with Priceless, um, do you have, like, something special coming with it? Like, would you say, like, um, like a package, like vinyl, or maybe, like, a CD, DVD, or merch? Or you don't want to give none of that away right now? I mean, we, we're... We're still in, a, in a, uh, the motions of recording everything, getting the game plan together. So, yeah, we definitely do. We definitely have some merch that will be coming out with it. We're definitely looking into the vinyl. We're actually looking for a, a, a beautiful home for it that want to accept it and know what to do with it and listen to our ideas so we can, you know, make it receive and put out there the best way possible. Uh I'm not trying to cut any corners. I'm not trying to rush with it. I'm not just trying to make a quick dollar and fall back. I it, this as an artist, you you love to grow, and I think growth is beautiful. And every day, like I don't, I may not write every day or in the studio every day listening to beats, but when it, the inspiration comes for an artist, it's beautiful to even see it in motion, to see it played out, and to see how certain songs come together and ideas are formed is it's, it's, it's like magic. It's like a beautiful boxing match, man. When you see the art forms and the voice come together over the music and you know what the engineer is listening to. He's a trained air and an MC. It's, it's just so beautiful, man. I love, I love to do it. So, like, 
again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put it right together right and right? give the people what it is that I would want. Well, it's also your passion, too, because, like, it's just like what you said, too. You're not just doing it for a quick buck. You're doing it for the love of it, too. And I believe that's what makes timeless music is when you put your heart into heart into it. Yeah. 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 I mean, even some artists fall into slumps and, you know, writer's block or whatever they want to call it. Or, But as long as they're still doing it for the love of the passion and their heart is there, you, you get over that. And you, you, you find a way to get up out of that shit and write some of your best work like uh pressure bust pipes and for me i i think i perform better when my back is up against the wall it is it i, I come out like a wolf yeah. that's what it is a wolf brother yeah because when you're backed up into a wall the only way to go out is front there you go there you go and we definitely ain't falling to the ground taking it like no bitch nah. <laughs> we fall down seven times get up eight that's all that's a fact um, so you have a large discography of music too, but I was curious on some of the genres outside of rap that you love to listen to, because I always was curious on your playlist and what that's like. Well, I listen to everything. I just started doing more of the DJ and things, getting booked for little gigs here and there, just the DJ, not even perform as Tech or Smith and Wesson, just the DJ and vibe out. And it's, it's dope just to look out on the crowd and see the way your music selection is, is rocking the parties that have people moving. So I, I listen to some of everything. I listen from spoken words to gospel to jazz to R&B. Of course, hip-hop. And it, it's serious. It's seri- I love some John Poe Train. I love oh, yeah. Nina Simone. I love listening to even Mighty Clouds of Joy. I love some Marvin Sapp. Oh. Anything can move the body, man, and make the mind open up and take you on a journey, man. It's, it's even some of the young homies out here that's making some dope, dope hip-hop music. Wow, that's actually inspirational to hear that you would listen to a spoken word album. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my daddy used to play the sax and drums, so all types of music open up the soul and the mind. You can travel with that. It's just like opening up a book to read, man. You... You let that music take you away and you, you you hear certain horns and keys. It's like they're talking to you and just in a melodic form and you, you just drift away. It's like, oh, 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 I like how you said it. it's like a melodic form and you drift away. I get that way when I hear Dreamland by you and Steel. Um, just the things that you guys say now, like sometimes like, takes me back to when I was a kid, like that RB foot teaks, like we really lived that life. You came from that life too. Like that wasn't a fad. Like your family was in the military. Not at all. Not at all. The men in my family a lot of men in my family went through the military route. Uh one of my oldest brothers, one of my favorite brothers was a drill sergeant, made careers out of it. So a lot of the fatigues I was wearing was government army issued, really combat boots and fatigues as we got more involved in the street and in our own then we started getting timberlands or mountain gears or uh what's the other joints man yeah the shits is right there the fast squares joints we started putting the fashion to it and making it hood wear make it look dope in the hood rocking it a little baggy here and there you know, throwing a polo top on with it or a hill figure or whatever the case may be. And, and that was the that was the fatigue. That was the dress code right there. So you, you your mind was always sharp, militant mind, and you was ready to rock. And you had to dress that part. And also, like, you never know, like, what can influence people, too, that you may not even may know. Because I said this to uh, Mr. Blake. Um, every time I see Timberlands and Hurdies, I think of Smith and Wesson. That was the whole uh, reason why I started wearing Tim's and Hoodies was because of YouTube. Because like I bumped that album to shine in every day in twelfth grade. I don't know what it was. I was just on that duck down vibe in high school though, but like it's ain't nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> you know, I mean that's that's dope when your fashion can open up the minds of a younger generation, older generation just through music and videos and visual. That's why it's so important like that. And, um, yeah, that was just, I don't think we were so fashion 
mind orientated at that time. We was just rocking what we thought was dope to us. Yeah, just being yourself. It was comfortable. We go get the parachute pass from the weed spots and be like, nigga, ain't nobody rocking me. Wait till I get the constructs or the black checkers or the Thames. 40 below, and I'm going to crush this. Ooh. And that, that, that was the vibe we was on, man. And, you know, it's just, you you look good, you feel good. Right? You got to smell like and look like success. Even though you may not be at that point of success that you want to, nobody outside your circle, outside yourself, got to know that. Yeah. As long as you carry it correct. Yeah, because it's all about how you carry yourself, too, because not everybody needs to know what you're going through, too. Like, right, some of the right. most strongest things, like, people never say. Go. Um, I consider you to be one of the very first rappers to rap over a video game sample beat, uh, Super Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Um, do you consider yourself one of those too? I mean, I don't, I don't, I never really thought about it that deep or looked into it like that. I mean, that was just a beat that a lot of people had passed on that the producer had made. And once we heard it, we was like, man, send that. <laughs> People passed on that beat? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was just like, send that, bro. Let us get that. We already got an idea of what we want to do to that. And Super Brooklyn was born. Well, oh, yeah, wow. Well, also, like, some of your um, music, too, like, I'll tell you this right now. If I ever get married, that song Monumental that you guys have with Tyler Woods, I would play that at a wedding, too. Because it's just the feel that you get from that song, too. It was like a celebration. Oh, man. Give thanks, man. Appreciate that. All right, that that's a big Beautiful. fact. I was, and if that if I ever do get married, too, I'm going to keep my words to that and send you that video. Ah, uh, your, your, your future... Your future bride might be listening to this interview. She'll seek you out. It'll happen. Even into existence. <laughs> well, um, also, too, like, you don't, when people, like, think of rap, they're like, oh, it's shoot them up, don, don. There's actually poetry in these verses that you guys lay down, too. Everything from roses to time to say. That's, that's modern. I consider that modern day poetry. Oh, man. Give thanks. Again, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the art of hip hop is poetry. The, even from the breaking, even from the graffiti, the way the hand moves, the way that you hold the paint, it's all poetry in motion. That's the words flowing over a beat, or the words coming rolling off of your tongue and just being pronounced certain ways. Not just because it rhymed don't make it poetry. It's all the motion in it, and and how it's put together, the story behind it, and where it takes the listener or the reader from one point to an apex and then bring them down and sort of ease them out of the way of trouble or let them know this can end up, this can be detrimental, this is the route you take. So it's all poetry. And it, it's all about writing it and the way you, you got to present the package to the person. That's all. It's, gonna, it's, it's poetry and feel good to the ears. That's what it is. Feel good music. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Feels good to the ears. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Do you have and the soul? Oh well, yeah. Like that's what I love about music too. When it actually, touch, when you make a connection just by words and touches the soul of people, like that, that's a powerful tool right there. That's it, bro. That's it. Do you have um a particular favorite verse that you just always refer to as like that's my favorite verse? Like I was in the zone when I made that, or you kind of don't do that. people talk about it and do that okay you 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 let the people talk about how good and how nice you are and this one he must have been this i just do it as i feel it if i say favorite verse i have it would be a lakeston hughes poem oh wow for me ain't been no crystal stare and i i apply that to my everyday living every day wow um do you read a lot of books tech I try to, especially now that I'm uh, getting to the 40 years of age. I try to, to keep the mind sharp and, you know, stay up to date of what's going on. I just uh, purchased the Rick Ross book the other day. I got like 20 more pages left. I just got that yesterday. Oh, wow. Hurricane, you run through that, eh? <laughs> yeah, 
I've got like 20 more pages left for that to read. Okay. Uh, well, I actually, that was leading on to my next question, too, about uh, reading a lot of books, too. Um, have you ever considered writing a book? Me, personally, no, I haven't. I think my partner, still, he, he he's a dope-ass writer, man, and I think he was, he had a couple of offers or meetings about it, so I think it may be, I don't want to speak out of turn. Yeah. If anything, I would speak it into existence. I think he may have something coming. I, I hope so. I'm not a thousand percent sure, though. Well, I always say this, too, because with all the biographies and um, many series that you see coming out, like how he did with um, N.W.A. and Wu-Tang, like, I think it's about that time to tell the Mob Deep and Duck Down story pretty soon, too, because... Yeah, we are, we are actually in the works with uh, the brother, the intelligent mastermind, Kevin Powell, with making the... Uh, the boot camp documentary, not just Smith and Wesson, but us as a collective. So we're definitely in the works for that. We're coming up on our 25th anniversary of The Shining for Smith and Wesson. So we're just trying to cross our T's and dot our I's. Um, so with that being said, too, like the actual that coming into fruition, too, you're very, like, because you guys must have stories that were behind the scenes that, you guys may put in that, or you guys may not, like, because obviously things happen behind the scenes that not everybody knows. Right, right. Yeah, there's a couple of dibble of dabbles in there and secrets revealed. Well, not really secrets, just things that the public or everybody wasn't privy to know. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely a few of those in there, definitely. Yeah, because when I was watching the Wu-Tang docuseries, I was like, damn, Ghostface was with Reza's sister? I would have lost her if I was Reza. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, being um, I was fortunate enough to be taught the game of chess by Old Dirty's father, rest in peace, to oh. both of those men. So, wow, Old Dirty used to live right up the block from me out in Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. So, I was I was kind of privy to a lot of that inside of info that was that was going on with there. My man, born from the east. Uh, uh, a bunch of VA cats that I was running around with in VA. Uncle Tim and Mike had them, you know, Shane, Black. So it's a few things that, you know, we, we had inside knowledge about. Salute Chef Raekwon, of course. Go salute the whole move, man. And, um, as you see, Buck got a joint from Meth on a new Black Moon album, Rise, Black Moon Rising album. That's dope. Yes. So, you know... It's, it's, it's good to see that they even incorporated that and opened up the doors a little bit to let, you know, people in to see what's truly happening. Well, yeah, also, too, like, even with uh, Rock, with his AP, Clicks and Clans, like, the Wu-Tang and Duck Down Clan, I was like, holy shit, this is fire. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, they've been rocking with Meth and Red Man since Magnum Force, you know? I ain't having that, so it, it's always... It's always like Sean Price said it best, man. Uh, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Boot Camp Click ain't nothing to Wu-Tang. You know what I mean? You had to let that sink in and get the meaning of what it was. So from day one, we've been rocking with them. Even even Ray Kwan with Smith & Wesson on the the uh, Hurricane G joint. And it's like Black Trump and so many other songs that we got to the joint on Dreamland. So, you know, it's, it's like... When you build a bond, that's that's what gets you through life. Your bonds and friendships that you make with your certain peers and your family. And it's, it's important that you keep those people close. That's very true, too. Because, like, if you look throughout the years, too. I said this to um, either Mr. Blake or Evil D. Um, Duck Down lasted um, throughout Death Row and Bad Boy. Like, that's, like, that's so rare to see nowadays. Like, a label lasts that long. Yeah, man, but we, we took our bumps and bruises. We was in the trenches with it. That's why it's boot camp. Man. We, ain't, we ain't got that moniker for nothing. Well, you get. I, I love how you say you guys were in the trenches, too, because i tell you one time, when I was bumping wreck time, I was walking through some dope-ass alleys in high school. I don't know what I was on back then, but I was in my, I was, I was, on, I was on my bullshit back then. I'll keep it a buck. Oh, shit, yeah. There you go, man. You live and you learn. Real though, military minded. You 
get it out. We got to get it. As long as you you, you stand for something, it's gonna it's gonna happen. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen in the first three five years, but it's gonna happen. And that, Trust and believe. And that's another thing that people don't realize too. Like they expect everything to happen overnight. It's like things take time. Yeah, man. I don't fuck with nobody trying to skip out on the steps and ladders, man. You, want, you think you just gonna jump up the escalator? Nah, that shit ain't gonna happen. They be falling right back down. <laughs> oh, man. Busting your head. Trying to keep up. Um, so I've been told to ask very unique questions, too. And I heard, I'm sorry, I heard from you, uh, Half a Mill was a big influence on you. Yeah, half a male, rest in peace. That was our brother, man, from Albany Projects, another Brooklyn night. Great dude, great heart. Great on the mic, pink game was crazy. You know, we he was he, we was uh rocking with our his cousin, our man, we call him Pretty Boy Unique. And um rest in peace flam, that whole family. You know, and he, he must have been magical or something about him. You see he was rocking with Nas and the firm, so they they recognized his talent, and um, he's he's definitely missed, never forgotten about. I was gonna say that's how he found Half a Mel too, because I believe he has his own solo on the firm too. I was like, yo, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not half was that nigga. I was actually trying to get a verse to put on Priceless for from Half, but you know it's it's so much shit, man. Yeah. Um. Can you remember the very first time that you met Half a Mel? The very first time? Well, yeah. I would see Half. We would hang out during high school. And oh, wow. We would hang out in the hood. He would have the green range. We'd be right, right in the hood. I'd be on my dirt bike, my motorcycle, and I, you know, we're bumping to each other in the hood all the time. So the first time wasn't, it, it, it was, every time was like the first time. It would be so dope. We'd get some bottles of mo, <laughs> hop up. Had some dice games, some some cyphers. It was it was even more than rap. It wasn't a bunch of. It was cyphers back then, but it, everybody knew what it was. So it was just love and happy to be around each other, man. It was just we was doing more than just music with each other. It was it was it was bonds again and street mentality and shit that was going down. So you know what I mean? It was, it was good times. That's a fat well. It also brings the music that much better, too, because, like, it's like that, like you said, you guys had ciphers back then, too, but you guys were friends before anything. Exactly, exactly. Um, I, I, I gotta ask this, too, because, like, I've been on a dirt bike, but, like, not in the city. What's it like riding a dirt bike in NYC? <laughs> <laughs> bike life, man, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> um, do you still have dirt bike? Like, do you still ride bikes? Nah, I don't own I don't own a bike at this time and moment. I um still bike life to, to the in the heart, but yeah, nah, I I rather go on four wheels now. I, of course, I can still ride. It, that's nothing. Oh yeah, it's like second nature. Yeah, like in the summertime, I might I might um, you know everybody my man's that'll still try to get me to ride every summer. You get a bike, you <laughs> like nah. I just give me your bike for about two hours. <laughs> I'll be good with that. <laughs> Okay, um, so with you having a lot more coming up too, um, I'm mostly excited about Priceless too because you said that that will be your most personal album too, and it also shows the growth even when I go back and listen to the all too, that's one hell of a project by the way too, like the reception that you guys got from that is crazy. Yes, I love it, I love it. I mean of course, it, I think personally it should be bigger than what it is, especially on sales wise and in different places, but you know, it, it is what it is. Just keep working and grind on stuff. Yeah, like this this album shit is Grammy worthy right here. I'm saying that right here. This is Grammy worthy right here. Just from start to finish. I was like, I don't know who they have running the Grammys, but they need to get some of these younger people in there because like guy hey, Smith Weston, right here, right here. <laughs> there you go. It's like Recognize what you, and realize. That's a fact. It's like what you said, too, speaking to existence. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. Um, well, Tech, um, I won't take up most of your time. Um, this is a question that I ask everybody at the end of each episode, too. Um, with my speech impediment, I actually said the wrong question to steal. He thought I said in a thug's place. I meant to say thug place, but I told him that after. <laughs> um, 
So, with that being said, um, do you have any words for somebody in a dark place trying to see the light? Pray. Mm. Get on your knees, open your mouth, and pray to the Most High. For, for me, being a child of Islam and Muslim, we pray to Allah. Your God may be someone else, whatever his name may be. You may not even believe in God. You may just believe in a higher power other than yourself. But prayer works. That brings me out of dark places a lot of times. And a strong family structure. Man, when you have a strong team foundation, you can just call up your man or your homegirl, whatever it is. Not somebody that you necessarily got to be fucking or whatever. Just yeah. your homegirl or your boy, your partner, whatever. And just talk to them, man. And just let them know what's on your mind or what you're going through. And pray again. I'm not on my dean as I should be. I, we, we're our obligation is to pray five times a day. I try to get in as much as possible, you know. And um, it really helps, man. Prayer, and believe in keeping the faith and keeping pushing, because everybody's no is not your no. It don't apply to you all the time. And all these memes that you see on social media, don't get caught up in that shit, because. That don't apply to everybody either, man. It's, it's to each his own. Your life is different. You're original. And pray. That's it. And also live life instead of just looking at a screen and letting it tell you how you should feel. You gotta... There you go. Use your mind and your brain while you can still use it. And it works properly. You don't have to be all force-fed. Even if you read something, you can still Google it and see if it's true or not for yourself. Do your own research. Yeah, and we do have the tools to use that, people. Yes, sir. Um, so with this being said, too, I love how it did come full tuition now. Um, I always loved your music, and I'm always going to love it. But now I'm going to love it 20 times more. Because, <laughs> you know, I never would have expected this. Like, all I wanted in life was a crooked eye interview, and then I was going to quit. I never, <laughs> I never would have expected any of this. Did you get the crooked eye interview? I did. Oh man! That was like a that was a. I was trying to reach out to Brooklyn. I was trying to get in contact with him. If you speak to him again, let him know I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to get in contact with. Him. Oh, and most definitely, sir. Yeah, I will definitely do that, sir. Because uh, Crook and Smith and Wesson, or even just a Crook and Tech. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. All right. No. Um, and also too, that was our uh, episode ten. I'm on episode like 157 now. Yeah, see, God is good, man. It is. It is. But this is my passion, though. Like, ever since, like, I can remember, I wasn't one of those kids who would run to the TV and, like, watch cartoons. I always, like, watched, like, the news or, like, the little documentaries. And then I remember when Double XL and The Source came out, I had, like, so much stacked. Like, why do you have so much magazine? I'm like, I just love reading this stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. That is, again, like you said, that's your passion. But me growing up, I was definitely into my cartoons, man, and toy collection, race tracks, remote control cars, and and helicopters, joints like that. That I love that, man. I need to find me a good RC right now. <laughs> yeah, well, at this day and age, too, they probably can go for a lot faster, a lot faster than they did yeah, back then. <laughs> yeah, you need a lot of open space. I lost so many of those under car tires, rolling in the intersections, and. Losing control. <laughs> Cars running over them. Yeah, man, words. But yeah, that was my joints right there. Wow. Um, so, uh, Tech, do you have anything um, that you want to plug in before I let you go, Ken? Um, definitely, please. I want to just say thank you for the support on the Lost G Mixes. If you don't have it, go to Tech Smith & Wesson, T-E-K-S-M-I-F-N-W-E-S-S-U-N dot bandcamp.com and uh, you can download it for free. It's right there. It's up to you. You want to make a donation or not, it's on you. Appreciate it either way. Just make sure you get it. Um, you can hit me on on the social media as far as Twitter or, or the uh, IG. Go at Tech Smokey Live. I don't fuck with Facebook. I don't deal with Facebook. That is not me. I don't have anything to deal with that page. Mm. That's a fan page. I have no access to it. I don't even check it. So 
If you've been hitting me one time, why I haven't been getting back to you, that's the reason. <laughs> also, just go on IG, too. Everyone uses IG nowadays. Yeah, there you go. IG, <laughs> Twitter, Tech Smokey Lie, T-E-K, S-M-O-K-E-L-A-H, Boom Shot. And I'll definitely be putting the link to the Bandcamp link for so people can tap all the way in if they haven't, which they should be. Give thanks, King. Give thanks. Give thanks. With that being said, <clears throat> this is a full circle episode and also a classic. I know I say classics a lot, but I really do be dropping yeah. classics. It's another classic episode from a desk low featured my guy, Tech. Priceless song come. Boom, 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 shot. Boom, 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 boom shot. And we out. Uh, welcome back from the desk of low. For this episode, I have one of the forefathers of hip-hop. He's part of two legendary groups. Somebody who I listened to since I was a teenager, probably even before that. Um, he's, uh, he's a very fire solo artist, too, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about that, too. I proudly introduce General Steele. Salute, salute. Good to be here. Thank you for the platform. And thank you for all the dope music that you've been putting out. I've just been been bumping Monumental with that joint with Tyler Woods. I love that song. Oh, man. Good thanks. <laughs> um, so, I see you're just getting off a, uh, a European tour, sir. I'm just wondering, um, how was that experience for you, sir? Um, well, it's, it's, it's always, it's always amazing. You know, like, you, you, you do your recording... And you do videos and interviews, but it's it's like, you know, when you step on that stage, it's the moment of truth, the triumphant moment that you was working up to. You know, so it's always um, liberating to uh, get on that stage and to see how people respond to it. For me, it's, it's like some spiritual, some spiritual event. I love it. And to be in Europe, that's a, you know, that was itself was like that. Amazing because now you you crossing borders with your with your dialogue and um bridging bridging gaps and stuff like that. So it's it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful experience. It looks like you guys had a wonderful time out there too from your Instagram. Uh, yeah. So to me I probably would still be out there for for a little bit longer, you know. So it's, it's always places that um have been untouched. You know, we, we, we did a did a uh, a few venues in Germany, uh, a few in France, um, but then there's people going, hey, come to Barcelona, come to Spain, um, come to Portugal, you know, come to Greece, come to, uh, you know, Australia, so many different places that we haven't touched, and it's always, like, more to experience, so I look forward to that, you know? Does it still blow your mind that, you know, that people are still, like, crossing board, like, internationally, like, that don't even speak the same language or bumping your music? Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's definitely mind-blowing. It's definitely mind-blowing, um, you know, um, but language is, language is vast, you know? When you think about language and, and, and uh, you know, the English language itself, uh, a, lot, a big part of it comes from Latin, you know? And um, you think about uh, hip hop. When you talk about slang, a lot of the slang comes from emotions. You know, a lot of the words that we use, a lot of the new words that are being put into uh, the lexicon, even now, um, define what we mean as the English dialogue. And I think that uh, hip hop has breached some gaps with the different slang and, and the, the, the passion that's, that's hidden behind the words in the lyrics and stuff. So it's beautiful to see, man. You know? Is English your only language that you speak, sir? Unfortunately, yes. I, I know a little bit of words in different languages, but not enough to, you know, to get me by. If it, if it helps, sir, I'm the same. I only probably know only the cuss words in certain languages. <laughs> you know, you spend, you spend enough time in any one of these places, you pick up enough and not for the idioma to get around, I think. Um, so when you go overseas, is it um, is it a different crowd when you go overseas, or is it just like pretty much the same as it is in the United States, sir? Because I I never been to both. I'm still in Canada. Well, I mean, I think like if you go to uh, certain spots in Germany, um, 
you like Zurich. Zurich is is, is mainly um, Caucasian. You know, it's maybe a few black like faces sprinkled in there. Or if you go to certain spots in France, then you will have a different mix uh, mix up crowd. Um, you go to Spain, you're gonna have a mix up crowd. Like it, it varies. But um, what I do like is that the crowd has a variation of ages. I've seen kids as young as eight years old at a show with their parent, of course. Um, on their own, I've seen kids there like 14, 15 years old standing in the front of the stage and, and um, they're enjoying the, the songs just like they was there when the Shiners first came out, which is 21, 20 something years ago, you know? So I, I, I think that um, seeing that reminds me of when I was listening to hip hop and I was 13, 14 years old. And it's just refreshing to know that it's an open battery when we're dealing with that. Just wondering, uh, wh- who were you listening to when you were coming up, sir? Oh, man. Anything I can get my hands on. Um, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, uh, Kumo D. I had an older uncle, so he was into Dougie Fresh. And he put me on the Google when Google first came out. Um, but I listen to everything, man. Big Daddy King, Get Fresh Crew, um, Juice Crew, uh, Soul Sonic Force, uh, Rapid Delight, everything that was around rap at that age, I wanted to hear about it. Because, yeah. like, I can't imagine being having music so accessible because I won't lie, when I was coming up, because um, I was born in 91, so I was a little bit spoiled coming up with the music because it was so easy to access. And I'm just wondering, like, um, like with, with everything, like, back then, like, how did you guys find everything? Was it all through magazine or was it, like, some, some of it through, like, video music box or something like that? Well, we was lucky enough to have... Like, um, the radio stations were gems for us back then. But they didn't come on until, like, after 2 o'clock in the, in the AM. Oh, you know, okay. um, one, I forget the name. I think his name was P-Nice or something like that. He used to come on 2 o'clock from 2 to 4 and just play hip-hop that you never heard before. It was all new stuff. The first time I heard Slick Rick was on one of those, uh, one of those late night sessions. Um, another, another, uh, to these two cats, uh, Teddy Ted, Teddy Ted, um, used to, um, the awesome two used to play like late night, um, wow man, Steve, it used to be a lot of, uh, not a lot, it used to be a handful of guys who were going super late and sometimes from two to six o'clock, you might catch something on the Tuesday, you might catch something on the, um, a, a Friday night or a Saturday night. But I would have to buy cassette tapes, and um, I would put them in my in my in my tape deck, and I would just record the shows until the tape ran out. Because I would clearly go to sleep on them shows. I couldn't stay up that long, you know. Well, so, but then, the next, <laughs> but the next day I would go to school with all brand new music nobody heard before. So I was kind of like the cool guy with the, with the, with the new tunes. So it, it became like a hobby. So uh, when you when you start recording with those tapes too, like, do you still have a lot of those tapes to this day or no? Oh, absolutely not. I wish I did. <laughs> It'd be I, cool, I, but it's always a, it's always a good thing to you know, have something from your past. I'm pretty sure you have a lot of things from back in the day that you still have. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of a I'm sort of a, a hoarder. I have um I have quite a few things that I've accumulated. Some recording sessions. I have some cassettes where we was recording The Shining, um, the first album, and um, like this was before before we get CDs burnt. <laughs> I would I would record I would record I would request tapes of every version, you know. So I have some tapes where it's like ten versions of of Tim's and Hood Check, and like you know, like why am I saving that? I have no idea. But I'm just like weird and quirky like that. But I like to keep the stuff, man. But see, that, that was also one of my questions I was going to ask you, too. Like, do you listen to a lot of those old tapes from time to time just to, like, just for yourself that you don't plan on releasing? Just just so you can... I, I, I to, like... I mean, I, I, I've accumulated so much stuff. 
I, I rarely get to that stuff, but if I'm doing some swing cleaning, you know, I might break out the old tape deck and I'll throw some, I'll throw some old in there. I also have, you know, uh, over the, the, the few, few years ago, well, I don't know when it started, but guys are starting to really bring out, um, bring back tape, tape, uh, cassettes. I see that. So I've got a, I've got a few cassettes from a few people and it's kind of cool to kind of pop a cassette in there while you're doing your, you know, cleaning out your basement, cleaning out your, you know, your, 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 um, your old drawer, your old closets and stuff like that. And just listen to some, to that old cracking sound. I think it's, it's got something interesting about that. Nostalgic. You know, uh, one of the first cassettes, because I was young coming up, um, uh, one of the first cassettes I ever touched was the BDI Thug, one of my older cousins had, and I remember, oh, man. <laughs> I remember I wrecked a tape on that from that, and I remember you were so pissed about that. He's like, you know how hard that that is to find in Canada? <laughs> yeah, wow, that's real. <laughs> the BDI Thug. Uh, that, you know, I kind of wish that, you know, I kind of had a more sense of what was going on during that time because like I said like when, when you guys came out like um, I just want to check out my phone you, your first um, song you ever appeared on was ow, ow. Black Moon's first album right? Yeah Black Moon's first So when you like was your name always General Steel? It was a Steel at first Well when would you say the General came in? Um the general, that's yeah, kind of tricky. I think it came in maybe around album number three. Um, I was having moments where I was like, okay, still, um, I was going through moments where I wanted to change my name. Like, I think that I was going through, like, identity crisis. You know, you know, like I want to put by using my real name, but it's maybe it's not cool enough. But I want to start being more uh, getting into the real person as opposed to the artist who was Steel. And then I started seeing MC uh, like DJ Steel and uh, other guys using the name. So I'm like, that what makes me different? Not the big guy, the tough guy, the most hardcore with the with the with the with the with the, with the silver teeth like jaws. So I gotta what would make me stand out? So I don't know. I started to um, use that and uh, just assume the position of kind of like stepping up to the plate more. Um, I was already being called the general amongst the boot camp clique, so I figured. Let me make it official. And I had to work for it because, you know, it's just, it's just people be spelling my name wrong and it's just a pet peeve of mine. I can't stand that, you know, because if it ain't got to be at the end of the day, it's not me. It's somebody else. It's some other still. It's some other guy, you know. So it has to be all in a name where it has to be spelled appropriately and the meaning um, for the meaning to, to, to manifest. So, and I had to, I had to switch it. That's what I had to add on, I should say, you know? Was this, like, around the time of America's Nightmare Part 2, you would say? Um, it started before then. It started before then. Because I was... Before we put out America's Nightmare Part 2, we put out Welcome to Bucktown. You know, and Bucktown... Welcome to Bucktown. It says, you know, I still use in General Steel. General Steel presents Welcome to Bucktown. But I started using it on different features and stuff like that. Like, I started, like, kind of, like, breaking, breaking the ice on different things. And then I started demanding that for people uh, give me the credit and they put general, general still there. And would you ever consider, because we live in a very interesting time, sir, would you ever consider adding a thorough installment to the series? Because I believe, like, now it would be the perfect time for that. <laughs> you know what? I, I had actually started working on uh, third one, but I'll call it 2.5. And this was a couple of years ago. This was before Trump was in office. You know? And, um, I was toying around with this fact, but there was so much other things that was going on that I, it just never manifested. Um, but yeah, you, 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 you are, you're on something right now. It will be an interesting time to, 
to uh, put something like that into effect. Because like it's a lot, it's a lot of material right now. That's what I mean. Oh my like, goodness! That's what I mean about that. That's why I was like, that's why I always wanted to ask you since I found that album because like you got tracks on that album that I still bump to this day, like State of the Union, State of the Union, yeah, Patriot Games, Rebellious. Like I can go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, now that's real stuff, man. Like those are real. Like at that time, I was. I was, I was, I was, that's where my brain was at, 100%. You know, I was fed up, you know. Like, right now, I'm watching the, 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 the uh, the, uh, what's, your, what's the name of that movie? Wag the Dog. It's almost like a big soap opera, but it's really going on. But you know what? I might work on that, man. A couple other people been, been trying to, uh, push me to that. But, um, you know, like right now, one of the most important things is pushing is, um, Smith & Wesson, the Smith & Wesson album. And, you know, substantiating some of the artists that I'm working with on my, on my brand, Bucktown USA. So, you know, with your brand so. too, Bucktown USA, I'm just wondering, what, what do you hope to accomplish with that brand, sir? Well, I would like to make it a household brand. I would like to be able to make it a, a, a gateway for some artists and producers to be able to continue to make uh, good classic music. You know, people are going to always... Um, utilize music as a tool throughout their lives and I want to be successful and, and we're, we're, we're financial um, you know financial situation can be, can be taken care of where we can invest back into the community into more um, cultural cultural um, organizations I've seen a few things that's going on in Jersey and even overseas where it's like um, we have performed at this at this, um, this cultural center where it wasn't a conventional center. When I walked in, it looked like an art gallery. And it was just, you know, wooden floors, all white walls, um, with paintings and pictures on the wall. And then you enter another room and it's like, it's like a classroom with paintings sprawled all over the place. But it seemed like it's where a person might hold a seminar um, or a tutoring session. And then you walk into a next room and it's a small venue with a bar, with a little small stage. And this is where we performed that. It wasn't a humongous stage. It wasn't like something that separates the arts from the people. It, was, it, it brought me closer to what the culture is all about. It's about the fine arts. It's about mingling with, with the community. It's about teaching. It's about reaching folks. So something like Bucks and USA Entertainment is something that, that can definitely be a, um, a useful vehicle in dealing with the stress and the culture. See, like, I wish there was more people like you out there, because, like, I'm just wondering, um, you've you, you done a lot of things, a lot of things in your lifetime, and you're very humble still. Just wondering, like, what makes you very humble? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm grateful for that. Thank you, man. I, I think, um... Are you most welcome? Like, this is this is I mean this is this is reality for me. This is not like I'm not living in a dream. Um, and even still, like I'm 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 still have the, some of the same responsibilities as anybody else. And it's more that I want to accomplish. Like I didn't get to that space where I'm just you know, I've, I've done everything. So I have to be open minded, willing to learn, willing to try stuff. You know. So I'm always interested in having a conversation about information. That's always that's always a good thing too, sir. Um, yeah. w one of the things too I was always going to ask, besides from um, recording or if your partner tech and being on terror, do you guys keep like a day to day basis, or do you guys just see each other like once a week or something like that? Yeah, man. We I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of like a recluse. Like I'm kind of like. I don't do too much hanging out, going to parties and stuff like that. I do the exact opposite of what my job requirements are. If I could stay in the house and binge watch um, TV series and stuff like that, old movies, I'll do stuff like that. Or I'll go to the park with my lady and do some reading, or, you know, have, have some, have a spliff in the tea and sit out there and enjoy nature, enjoy, the, enjoy God's canvas. Um, so I don't really hang out with anybody like that. 
every once in a while, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll do something. Um, we don't have, uh, we own the now. So we, have, we have different responsibilities, so it's no more um, just like frivolous hanging around, writing sessions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's only when we need to get to the work, you know what I mean? When we get to the work, that's when it all comes up. That's when we get, that's when we, when we lock in, we get it done. And you, but other than that, nah. You keep it. You keep it pretty simple, like me, like the spliff and the tea. I feel you on that one, sir. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Real organic, like not too good. Not, but you know, every once in a while, I might entertain and I might have a couple of the guys come over to my place. I play some music, like you know, um, I have the new project, so a lot of guys, you know, they don't have access to it. I'll, I'll maybe have some beers or some. Some um, some 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 bars, some blues, or something like that. And, you know, I, I play the play the tunes, and that might that might you know that could go on all night. You know, or we'll have a barbecue like before we started the tour. You know, we had a barbecue, invited a few close friends, and we let the, we let the joints rock out, ate some food, broke some bread, and you know. Before we, before we did our farewell to start the journey. You know, it's simple, man. Simple stuff, you know. But hey, that's some of the best times of life. Just enjoying the simple things in life. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is what I, this is what I look back, you know, I look back at when we first started and I kind of regret not taking my time with stuff. You know, everything happened so fast and you were young and, it was a lot of things that we did um, absorb well. It's just kind of like jump full steam, face first in the pool, and we survived nonetheless. But um, there were a lot of things that we could have did different as a team and, and myself as an individual. Um, but I'm grateful to still be here in that in that regards, whereas other as others have just kind of like dwindled, faded away. Yeah, because there's a lot of artists that are not getting booked and they're still not putting music out. See, with you, you're still currently active and you're still getting booked for shows. Yeah, yeah, thank God for that. But thank that's God because you that. put out, like, you guys put out timeless music. Like, that music's always going to be here, always. Yeah, I, I, I'm grateful, man, because at some parts, it's like you can get frustrated with it all. You know, like, you might not get the response that you want or you think you need to have to move forward and it might become discouraging. Some guys get caught up in the in the in the whirlwind of, of um of trying to go with the times, like act like um there's something that they're not just because they think that that's what people like to hear. I'm glad that Tech and I have kind of stuck to the script um of who we are, not trying to uh you know carve and copy what whatever's hot at the moment. Um, so a lot of our lyrics come across as just genuine and um, just, just just like real poet, real street poetry, as opposed to us trying to promote a lifestyle of, um, you know, just like gouging and, and hoarding and, and, and coveting and stuff like that. There's so much more to life, man. There's even the basic conversation itself. That's very true. That's very true. When you say, like, um, just a basic conversation itself, too, like, do you, like, um, would you ever be, like, have you ever done motivational speaking before? Um, I have spoken to a few, uh, I've spoken to a few platforms like that, but not, you know, none of, none of recent. Not, I've done some, not like on a tour, uh, just talking. No, no, I've, I've done like a few dates, uh, um, at colleges, different colleges and different schools, but it wasn't, you know, um, collective, like as a, as a tour, but I, I've spoken about it with a few people, but as a, recently I've just more so been concentrating on, um, you know, finishing what's in front of me, which is the music. And, and getting that done, and then I can, you know, I guess move around, be more flexible. But I would definitely do something like that. I think about it all the time because I, that's what I feel like when I'm around my friends. They give me enough, um, <laughs> enough material to, to motivate. 
See, and that's a good thing too, because like, you're supposed to be around people who motivate you, so uh, salute to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, when I first started this podcast, um, I used to try to get everybody from the boot camp to uh, appear on the show, and uh, it, it kind of fucks me up still that I got buckshot to be, like, the first person from your guys' camp to appear on the show. Um, this one, yeah. He's a very genuine soul. I'm just wondering, how did yeah. you meet? Um, I met I met buckshot through his sister. His sister uh, went to night school with his sister, and um, at the time she recognized me because I was uh, I was on different variety shows through my single rapper. My rap name was MC Steel at the time, and um, she started dancing for me shortly after. And she she, she suggested that I meet her brother because he's a much better dancer. And that from there, you know, we became good friends. And then, too, like, um, when you guys, like, show genuine love for each other on the ground, you don't see that much nowadays. Yeah, I mean, we actually spent a lot of time together, man. So, you know, like, just, like, a lot of families, even even families uh, don't, don't, don't speak that often. But we've, we've spent a lot of uh, time together. We've, been, we've gained and we've lost. So we can share a lot more than just rapping on stage. So I, mean, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have that genuine, you know, that, that, that true and interesting love from these brothers. Do, do you think it's too early for a boot camp clip movie? Because cause you guys have a crazy story. Like, you guys were around, <laughs> oh, you guys were around people who never want to hear. Yeah, I mean, that would be, that would be, a, that would be a dope, a dope story. I never thought about that. Like, I'm, I actually started writing uh, the book. And, you know, I got like, maybe like 10, 15 pages in, and I had to stop because I'm like, wow, it's stories within the stories, you know? Each one of us within the camp has a relationship with each other separate from the whole camp, you know? And I, I grew up, I knew Sean Price before both of us was rapping. And um, going to see my, my grandma, he lived around the corner. So our relationship started way before the boot camp. And I would spend time with Buckshot. When I met him, he was he wasn't even rapping yet. He was still dancing, and he was doing some acrobatic stuff. So I knew him before who got the props. It was shortly, a couple of years, but um, mm -hmm. um, you know, things of that nature. Like rock, I met him when I was solo artist. And he lived in the projects. The old top dog is my brother. Um, Louisville, thing. I know Louisville, but I ain't like Louisville because he was too quiet. So I was like, how you gonna, how you gonna be boot camp? I never, I don't never see this kid talk. I ain't <laughs> never seen him rap. I never seen him. But, but, but he lived in Rock's building and Rock was training him. So it was like, all right, you know. Working with these guys and you start seeing the growth and stuff like that. Um, so it's relationship building things that go on when you're not even there. And um, those stories are definitely um, a big part of why we all feel together. I lived with Buckshot for for a little while. We was we was um, we was fucking roommates. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it was really when I got my first bought when I got my first. Uh, apartment away from my girl and I split with her and I needed a place we became roommates man you know and we shared that up until we shared that for quite a, quite a while you know it was a good experience and then even after that you know Buck and I were always the two guys who would talk for hours stand on the corner under the moon and just talk about everything literally everything under the sun moon and stars you know Never go inside. He hated to be inside the walls. Like but yeah, that, that would be a good. That would be an interesting movie, man. It might have to be like a series. 
like on a continuous. Yeah, it would have to be like yeah, it would have to be a series because it's, it's so much intertwined in there. Like you would have to go and you would have to peer into the, the you would have to peer back the layers. It could be you know what I mean? if you think about it, it could be like the next Star Wars. It could be because the new the new guys are definitely uh, they've learned from us and they take it to some next new. You know, they they rightly inherited the the the, the, the baton. You know, it sounds like they're on course with what what the sound is now, without being corny with it. Yeah. You know, so it's a good it's a good uh splash. It's a nice little mix. You know, uh, your partner uh, Tech told me to, uh, and, and this is something that would it kind of put me on a mission. But uh, he told me to be the bridge to the generation gap, and I can't tell you how much I think about that every day. I'm just like, um, does it blow your mind that you see these kids disrespecting like the older people in the game for clout? Yeah, yeah, that's a that 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 does blow my mind. I don't come from there. I don't come from that place. Like I told you earlier, you know, I was listening to all hip hop. Before before guys were popular with names, I was listening to that stuff. That's how I know about a lot of these artists that came out around the time we came out because they was hustling since then. And um, how could you be in a craft, any craft, any, any, any profession without knowing the history of that profession? or at least knowing the ins and outs of what you got to do on a day-to-day basis to, to be successful there. I don't, you know, I can't, I can't respect that. I, I, I sympathize with these guys. Maybe that's why I don't listen to a lot of the new music that comes out, and I find myself, like, going back and just looking up, like, an old San Quinn album from 96 that came out when I was like five. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of things that are buried, too. You know, it's buried behind the popular music now is about a lot about numbers and like you said clout chasing and, and and seeing who got the most of whatever and the other music gets kind of buried but there's some stuff there that's another thing I like about going overseas too because you can start seeing the fact that a lot of these guys don't care about that stuff you know, they don't care about that clout stuff it's, 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 it's cool to have if you're a kid you want to have a clout you want to have like you want to be on the in crowd. You want to be doing all the things that's cool to do. But then there's kids that sit by themselves in the park and they cool amongst themselves and they cool with that. So they create a whole nother bohemian type of style and they might be outcast to the popular cast, but that's also um, a genre that's also a demographic that's to be catered to as well. So you can't just be stuck in one. It will serve you to be like a, a, a J. Cole can move around in the industry because of that. You know, he can do both. He's clearly successful in what he's doing, so it's just fair to say that he's making money. You know, he's living good. He's also humble enough to be in a neighborhood and with his nappy head, go to the store and buy stuff and hand out gifts and buy mama a house. You know, simple things that you really want to do in, in, in your heart. Yeah, because he doesn't put out no microwave music. Right, right. Like the fast food stuff, that 7-Eleven box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, how, that's that's candy. That's what's a lot of the things. I forget who told me about a lot of the things that are coming out is candy, and that's not... Um, I think Guilty Simpson told me that. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate yeah, because, it, you know, it's not, it has no, it has no shelf life. You know, all these preservatives and stuff, and it's not health, it's unhealthy as himself. Like, it's not like going back 20 years from now and going, yo, I remember this guy, little la la la, you know. But it, it has its place, though. It does have its place because in society, society sets the tone of, this, of the music, you know. Yes, so, this is where we're at, and I think that whatever, whatever, you know, whatever comes out of that. Now, hopefully it spins around and people start to mature a bit and then have a more have a more of a, of a, of a um, I guess open dialogue about the communities and stuff like I seen it, the, 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 the thing I was describing to you that was in Brussels you know and in Brussels like you had like right now in Brussels they're celebrating Christmas this whole Christmas thing so they have like 
you know, these, uh, I don't know, these vending, these open vendors where they have, they're selling their goods, wares, all kind of stuff. <coughs> New York is not doing that yet. New York is just like, it's just cold and New York looks like London right now. It's a gray, gray sky. There's <laughs> nothing, there's a lot of buildings, people are just passing each other. There's no warmth whatsoever. You know, you go to some spots in Switzerland, they'll have like, it'll smell like Christmas. They'll have chestnuts really roasted in an open fire in the middle of the street and warm wine and, and, and the, the, the culture of giving and the season is all in the air so you feel that energy. And then there's people who live there, the kids who live there, they're absorbing that stuff, but they're still able to go write rhymes. And their rhymes won't be about shooting, it won't be about stabbing, it won't be about doing drugs. It'll just be about the euphoria of life. You know, they might make better tunes. They might make tunes that cater to young people and older people, more tunes that are able, you might be able to listen to more so than some of these other things that I just saw, like, you know, Plus, I saw the song today. The song is very trendy today. Um, so uh, I just got a, two more questions for you, and I um, and I'll let you go because I know you're a very busy man, and I appreciate you doing this for me, sir. Um, uh, I appreciate you taking the time out because I, I I I totally understand what Tech is saying when he says you know there's a generation gap. And this is this is things that you know I. One thing that I do remember is when I was younger, I had no access to the artist. So I was intrigued by the words. I was intrigued. Like, how I kept saying, you're intrigued by the way. I do my thing. Do what? Pick up the mic. Ha, make swing. Like, you definitely was intrigued. Like, oh, wow, this is really happening. This is, this is, this is exploding in front of our eyes. This wasn't like this five years ago. You know, you listen to the soul music, you listen to, to, to old disco music and stuff like that, whatever auntie and granny had. So when we came out, we bridged the generation gap between the old and the, and the, and the current generation because the current, the old generation, they, they believed that hip hop was, was, they thought it was some crap. You know, they're just messing up with the records and the fame and the legacy. They didn't realize that these kids was, was on to something. You know, once they realize that it's like now you live through that, live through that, that world when you get to be able to now have access to your, to your, to your heroes. Like, that's amazing. Like, when I think about, all right, this kid that's looking at me rap. And this kid is, what, 16 years old and looks like he know the, the lyrics. I'm more amazed by that. So I want to go shake his hand, take a picture, post it on my Instagram page. That's my that's my duty to bridge the gap to go, yo, it's all right to be whatever age you are and listen to whatever kind of music you want to listen to. You don't have to be stuck into uh, an age barrier or or race barrier. Because somebody made up these these these, uh, these wacky lines, so it's like you know you deliver the message and let people know like it's cool. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to let people know like don't matter like what area from. There's a lot of dope things if you just go back and do the homework, and that's the thing. Like a lot of people don't want to go back and do the homework. Right, right. It's cool. It's cool. Maybe they'll take the time. Maybe they won't. But it's there. You know. It's like when I go overseas, if I have a day off, I like to go see the city. And, and there's no way in the world you can see a city in a day. No. They say do Rome in a day. Like, that would be crazy. If you could, you get up in the morning soon with the sun crack, and you just go around Rome and just try to see the whole city. Like, the whole day. That, oh, <laughs> that, that would be a story to tell right there. Like, it, it, it seemed like fun. But, um, man, it's so much. It's so much. So I think about when I come when I come to New York City, and it's a lot to see in New York City that I don't normally see. It's the same thing with music, the same thing with information and knowledge. The knowledge is there for people to, uh, to uh, grasp and gravitate to it if they will. Or if someone comes along and, and put some on to it. That's another thing I, I enjoy about doing music. It's like it's like a time capsule. You know, you put something in a time capsule and people can always go back like a, a virtual museum 
and go, wow, this came out in 1995. This is how cats was rhyming. This is how they was dressed. This is how they sound. Wow, this is 2011. Ooh, this is interesting. I can see the, ev the evolution, the elevation in the, in the dialogue and the, and the consideration and the, and the concepts and the content. And, you know, you could, you could see a, you could see a future by, by looking at the, the, di the diagram, you know. But it's fun as well. You know, it's, it's good to be able to travel on something that you like to do and meet new faces. And, and so it's, it's always like, gives you that new breath. You know, because it could be difficult. It could be extremely difficult to start to hate what you do. You know, see it as a, see it as a laborist. But see that that's what makes you unique though, because like you you like what you do. You're not like you're not just doing it's like, oh I gotta go do it a show, so let me knock this show and like you I seen you engage with the crowd too, like that's what I mean. A lot of people don't do that. But it's the energy yeah. it's the energy that you bring though. Yeah, I I, I, I feed off of them for sure. For sure. And I, I respect I respect them as human, so and and you know that's like I said that's rare. I wish the world would not have more people like you in this world. Well, thank you. Bro. Appreciate that. Okay. I got to speak the truth. You're very welcome, sir. Um, so just two more questions, and then I'll, um, okay. I'll go. Um, so you started one of my styles. Like it's not my style. It's actually your style. Um, I wear Tim's and hoodies a lot too. Like, like does that <laughs> still blow your mind that you started like that kind of movement? Uh, well, I think that I think that you know I wouldn't I wouldn't claim an ownership of that because that's really come from a place where uh, like New York was a was a cold place, so you know hoodies was is, when you was old enough to wear hoodies. Cause hoodies really was like mostly criminals wore wore hoodies. And as a kid, I can't even remember having a hoodie. I don't think my parents bought me a hoodie. I had like ugly knit sweaters and stuff like that. So, you know, we had a, uh, the, 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 the criminals, the older guys were really champion hoodies with the comb heads. And, you know, Tim's was already like a staple. We just took it and, and just maximized it and made it a thing. You know, Tim's and Hood, like, when you put that on, that's time to get get busy. Now you're about to go to work, whatever it is, you know? Okay. Same thing with the camouflage. Like, the camouflage, like, guys was wearing camouflage before us, but we, we assumed the position of soldiers, and we started to maximize on that. And um, that's how we dealt with each other in, in, in the studio. On personal level, we was, was really training each other and sleeping together on the floor, and I used to say bunking up, and you know a lot of these things was was, was the mentality that we was on. So we just pushed it like that yeah. more than anybody. <laughs> did 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 Park ever say he's like, yo, let me get some hoodies and Tim's real quick from y'all? <laughs> nah. I just yeah, had, I had just... Park and hoodies and Tim's. That's why I was wondering if you ever seen them in that in those actually. Well, you know what? Like, it might be like it might be like one or two pictures, <laughs> but he definitely definitely have a lot of Tim's in his closet. You know, <laughs> he wasn't in terms. He wasn't going with the Tim stuff. Like, but yeah, man, yeah, you're right about that. Like that was that was a staple, but it was a, it was more so a New York thing. You know, it was it was like the five bedroom. That was some just some real sweet stuff to do. See, I, ne I never been to New York, but I'm heavily inspired by New York. Yeah, New York has a lot of culture, man. That's another thing, like, the time caps with museums. There's museums all over this place, and, and we walk right by them. You know, and, when, and, and the only time people are going to uh, notice is probably when they're going or they lose access to them. So, but they're, they're around, the, Gardens, parks, walk through them parks, walk by the river, and the lake, or whatever, and make a wish, look at some different stuff, open up your mind, and you can travel through just absorbing the environment. I'll tell you one thing though, the first place I, when I travel next year, I already made the plans for New York City, so I'll definitely be checking out some museums down there. Yeah, 
the, New York is one big museum. <laughs> you can walk from you can walk from downtown Brooklyn to like Forty Second Street and it will blow your mind. You know, on a beautiful day, a nice walk or a nice bike ride through the city. Cause there's so much, man, so much. But one thing it is, it's super busy. You know, you ride through the city. What is it? It's super busy. Um, but getting there spots where if you wanna if you wanna be on some cool rock stuff, you can go you know, go by the by the promenade or Brooklyn Bridge Park and go sit by the water, sit on the grass and, and, and you know, do something different. But there's a lot of beautiful spaces there and there. I hope someone yep. else takes that and I'll take that. Um, so this is the, my last question that asks all my guests, and um, I always wanted to hear your response to this question. Um, sure. you, do you have any words for somebody in a dark place trying to see the light? Uh, words for anybody what? Do you have any words for somebody in a dark place trying to see the light? In a thug's place? Yes. Wow. Um, that's an interesting question. I think, uh, you know, nobody struggles the same. And it'd be, it'd be, uh, presumptuous to, to, to say that, you know, you gotta do the right thing all the time. But I can't say that if you know what's right, you know, if you try to do what you do for the right reasons and you keep your you keep your business to yourself and you're trying to get out the game or you're trying to live better like make that be your goal you know and 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 and, and, and hopefully you don't put no blood on your hands and you can't live with yourself because then, then you start to defy your own goals. You know, I, I ran with a game when I was younger and I'm still in the game right now, but I'm not running around committing crimes and causing harm to people. If anything, the game is going to be used for more positive, more constructive tasks. And that sometimes you got to go through some hardships so I would say always stay focused through the knowledge. Don't don't lose sight of of, of, of of the breath that flows through your lungs. Your life is important and it's definitely worth living just as the next man or woman. You know. So concentrate on life man, and do things that uh that, that, that take us there on that trip, on that journey. Well with that being said, I think that's the perfect way to end the episode because um in my beliefs, ever since Prodigy died, it really inspired me to give people flowers while they can smell it. And I'm really glad mm -hmm. I got to tell you that how much your music means to me and how much it's going to mean to me more. Because now every time that I hear your songs, I'm just going to cherish it even more because I got to have this interaction man. with you. Oh, man. Thank you. Man. I appreciate this conversation for sure. Appreciate yeah. it. Is there anything that you'd like to plug in before I let you go, uh, General Steele? Um... Well, Smith & Wesson, album number seven, titled The All, produced by Ninth Wonder and Soul Council, released in 2019, January. Um, I hope the people love it. There's some gems on there, so I'm like, um, and also in 2019, look for some more uh, general still music coming out of Bucktown USA Entertainment and just remember everybody Bucktown is everywhere yeah and I just stopped the recording so um I